This lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will be about coherent sheaves on projective space. Um, so we have the following problem. What we want to do is construct um, um, examples on um, projective space. So um, we did some examples for P1 by gluing, but the problem with gluing is it's really a bit of a mess. I mean, we, we could just about get away with it for P1 because we just had to glue together two things, but on bigger projective spaces, we end up gluing large numbers of things, and it's really rather tiresome keeping track of the bookkeeping. So this is really too messy in general, and we would like to find a cleaner way of doing it. So for affine schemes, um, so an affine scheme of the form spectrum of R, it's really easy because quasi-coherent sheaves are really just the same as modules M over R. Technically speaking, there's an equivalence of categories between these, but for all practical purposes, they're the same. So let's look at a projective scheme. So a projective scheme might be the spectrum, uh, so not spectrum, proj of R, where R is a graded ring. So R is equal to sum over I greater than equal to zero of some some ring Ri. And this suggests that quasi-coherent modules should be related to graded modules M, which is sum over I greater than or equal to zero, sum, sum over, so I not equal to zero of Mi. And there's Turns out there's not an exact equivalence between these. The, the, the relation between them is a bit more subtle than in the case of affine schemes. So what we want to do is to show how to go backwards and forwards between um, quasi-coherent modules over a projective scheme and graded modules over the corresponding ring. So first of all, let's just recall briefly the construction of the um, scheme associated to a graded ring. Um, so first of all, we have the points correspond to graded primes of R not containing sum over I greater than zero of Ri. Now, now we need a, the open sets, and we're just going to take a base of the open sets. And the base of the open sets consists of the open sets DF, which is the points where F is not zero. Well, it's, it's not quite the points where F is not zero. More precisely, it's the primes not containing F but we always think of it as being the points where F is non-zero. And for each of these base of open sets, we have to specify the ring of functions on this. So, so this is um, the regular functions on the open set DF. And you remember that this was equal to um, R F to the minus one zero. So this means degree zero elements of R F to the minus one. Um, so uh, we'll just recall an example. If we take R to be K X naught up to X N, then the um, closed points just correspond to um, points of projective space over a field um, up to 
multiplication by some non-zero lambda. And this just corresponds to the ideal i of um, uh, g with g x naught up to x n equals zero, where g is homogeneous. Um, uh, the only open sets we usually bother with in defining it are the open sets dxi. Um, so I'm just we're, we're just going to look at very special polynomials f, which is equal to xi, and dxi is isomorphic to affine space. Consists of all the points x naught, um, x one, up to one, so this is the ith position up to xn. Um, and O of dxi is just the degree zero elements of k x naught up to xn with xi inverted, which is just the ring of polynomials in x naught over x1 x1, so x naught over xi, x1 over xi, there's a one in the ith place, up to xn over xi, which is just a polynomial ring. So, um, so uh, th this, this open set is just isomorphic as a scheme to affine space. Um, okay, now we've reviewed that. Let's try and do the same thing from modules. So suppose now M is a graded module. We want to define a sheaf um, on the, 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 the projective scheme of R. And now if, if M is the graded ring R, you remember we defined the sheaf by putting O of D of Fi equals um, R F, sorry, that shouldn't be an Fi, that should just be an F, R of F to the minus one, and we took the degree zero elements. So this suggests what we should do for M. Um, if we want to define um, a sheaf M twiddle, what we do is, is we define M twiddle of DF to be M, f to the minus one, and then we take the degree zero elements of that. So that's the most obvious thing we can do. And we should now check this as a sheaf. And this is similar to the case of showing that the, the, the proj of R is, is a scheme. So I'll just omit the check, it's, it's just a kind of repeat of it. Um, by the way, I'm going to make a sort of meta comment here. Um, the definition we're giving here is a little bit, uh, we're, 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 we're defining it in a slightly different way from what Hartshorn does. The two methods are equivalent, so it doesn't really matter. And what Hartshorn does is he looks at the points of project of R and looks at the stalk of each point and um, defines the sheaf using those stalks. Here we're sort of ignoring the stalks and just using a base of open sets. Um, th this is somehow part of Grothendieck's philosophy that the points of a scheme are in some sense not terribly important. What is really important is the open sets together with which open sets cover the others. Um, this is actually the basis for something called a Grothendieck topology because Grothendieck realized you could define sheaves by ignoring the points completely and just working with the open sets. You just need to define something for each open set and check some property holds whenever open sets cover other open sets. And Grothendieck sort of axiomized this and came up with the idea of a Grothendieck topology, which turns out to be um, really useful to, for defining things like et al cohomology, where you um, replace open sets with something a little bit more complicated than open sets, and you can still define sheaves on those. Anyway, so the point is we've defined it M twiddle by ignoring the points and just using our knowledge of the open sets. Anyway, um, 
Let's get back to some examples. So um, um, we're just taking R to be K X naught up to X N. So proj of R is just N dimensional projected space. Uh, let's put that in R to use the same notation as Hartshorn. That's just R dimensional projected space over K. And now what we can do is we can let V in P K to the N, B as P K to the R be a sub variety. And then it corresponds to a graded ideal I. And we can form the module M to be R over I. And we can form the sheaf M twiddle. And M twiddle is a sort of sheaf with support on the um, variety V we started with. Uh, you can easily check the stalk of M twiddle just becomes zero if you're not in V. Um, so you can picture M twiddle as being something like a um, maybe a little one dimensional vector space at each point of V and being zero elsewhere. Um, you may think, why are we looking at R over I? Why don't we form I twiddle? Well, I twiddle is sort of generally useless. Um, just comment I twiddle is usually uninteresting. For example, if V is the set where, if, if we take just the V to be the set hypersurface where F is equal to zero, then the ideal I is just equal to F R, which is isomorphic to R. So I is actually isomorphic to R as a module, and I twiddle is just isomorphic to the sheaf of um, coordinate functions on, on projective space. So, so, so that's why we, we use R over I and not I. I just doesn't give an interesting answer. Um, next, um, there's a basic operation on graded modules. We can shift the grading. So here, um, if M is sum over I of M I, we can define a new module M N by M N I is M N plus I. So we've just sort of increased or possibly decreased the grading by N. It's easy to get muddled up about whether you increase or decrease the grading by N. Um, so, um, Let's have a look at what happens. What about if we take R as a graded module over R? And shift it by N and then take the associated sheaf. Well, first of all, R naught twiddle is just R twiddle, which is just um, the sheaf of um, regular functions on projective space over our field K. So um, let's have a look at what our N twiddle is. Um, well, on the, um, on the open set um, DXI, and we need to work out what our N twiddle of dxi is, and this is just the degree naught elements of um, um, k x naught up to xr um, with xi to the minus one, except we have to shift the grading by, by n. However, shifting the grading makes no difference. Or at least it seems to make no difference. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason is that Xi is an isomorphism um, from the degree um, degree run out of letters degree m piece of k x naught up to x r x i to minus one to the degree m plus one piece. So um, shifting the grading by n doesn't seem to make any difference. We haven't affected this up to isomorphism. Um, in other words, r n twiddle is isomorphic to r naught twiddle over each dxi. So at first sight, it looks as if this sheaf is going to be the same as this one. It, it's the same as this over each open set. But there's, there's actually a bit of a subtlety going on because um, the way these sheaves the way you glue these sheaves together is, is subtly different. Um, however, we see that um, Rn twiddle is locally isomorphic to R twiddle. In other words, it is an invertible sheaf. or a line bundle if you prefer the geometric terminology. Um, now let's check that it's actually different. So we can ask, is Rn twiddle the same as R0 twiddle? And the answer is no, unless n is zero, of course. Um, so um, we distinguish by calculating the global sections. We can't, I mean, we can't tell the difference by looking locally at them because they're locally isomorphic. So we have to do some sort of global operation like taking the sections. So let's look at the global sections of R n twiddle. And to do that, we have to take a section over d f i which is a degree um, n element of k x naught up to x r with x i to minus one. And we have to glue this to something over d f j, which will be a degree n element of k x naught up to x r. And this time we take x j to the minus one and we have to glue these for all, all the different various values of i and j. Um, well, if we compare these two, they have to be the same um, over the polynomial ring with x i and x j inverted. So if i is not equal to j, then this element can have no poles in xi or xj. So it can't really have xi to the minus ones in it because here this has no xi to the minus ones and it can't really have xj to the minus ones because this has no xj to the minus ones. So um, the, the, the degree and element in each of these must be a polynomial. So we see that the global sections of Rn twiddle is the same as the degree, the homogeneous degree um, n polynomials in k x naught up to x r. That's provided r is greater than or equal to one, because if r is equal to zero, then we can't find two different xi's there and the argument kind of breaks down. So let's look at the dimension of Rn twiddle over p0, p1, p2, p3 and so on. So here we're looking at the 
sorry, the dimension of global sections. So if we take the global sections of R minus two, global sections of R minus one, global sections of R zero, global sections of R one, global sections of R two, and so on, then here we just get a lot of zeros. Everything here is zero. Um, here the dimensions are all one. Here the dimensions go one, two, three, four, five, and here the dimensions go one, three, six, 10, 15, and so on. So, so here we've got Pascal's triangle. The, the, the dimensions are just given by this. And up here we've got a sort of trap for the unwary because these are both one, so this is a sort of trap. Um, zero dimensional projective space behaves a little bit differently. Um, um, so um, we see that all R0, R1, R2 and so on are all different. Um, we, can, we can work out the other ones are different by using some easy properties, which I'm not going to check. Um, if you work out the tensor products, you find that M twiddle tensor N twiddle is isomorphic to M tensor N twiddle, which you can easily check. So M N twiddle is M twiddle N. You notice in one of these, the twiddle goes over the whole lot, whereas there it doesn't. And M N is isomorphic to M twiddle uh, tensor with R N twiddle. So um, in particular, R M twiddle tensor R N twiddle is isomorphic to R M plus N twiddle. And from that, you can sort of shift up and down by tensing with R M. So you see that all these are also not isomorphic to each other because if you tensor with R N for N large, it becomes one of these positive ones, which are all different. So all these are actually different line bundles. Um, next, we've got the following question. Um, can we recover M from M twiddle. So if we're given the sheaf, can we recover the original graded module from it? So you might expect this by analogy with affine schemes. So for affine schemes, um, you can recover M from M twiddle as being its space of global sections. Well, you can't in general do this for projective schemes. For example, if M is equal to K in degree zero, and not in degree not equal to zero. Then you can check that M twiddle is just equal to zero because if you, if you localize this at any XI, you just get zero. So here we've got a non-zero module and if you, if you turn it into a sheaf, you just get zero. So, so we can't recover M from M twiddle in general. Um, however, we can almost do it. Um, so you sort of see that more generally, if, if M is finite dimensional as a K vector space, then again, M twiddle is going to be zero. And it turns out that this is more or less the only thing that goes wrong. Um, so we can recover it as follows. Suppose we've got a sheaf over, let, 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 let's do over R dimensional space over K. Um, then we define f of n to be f tensor with o of n. So o of n is, of course, just r n twiddle. And then we're going to define um, the global sections of f. Well, the global sections of f don't tell us very much because there might not be enough of them. So what we're going to do is define a sort of graded version of the global sections of f, where we just take the sum over all i, over all n in z, of the global sections of f of n. Um, 
So for example, um, if we just do this to the coordinate ring, we just get k x naught up to xr because um, the um, gamma the um, gamma naught of O is just k gamma one of O is spanned by x naught up to xr and gamma two is spanned by um, all the variables x i x j so you can easily check that if you take this graded um, module corresponding to the coordinate functions you just pick up the ring r we started with and it's also straightforward to check that gamma star of f is a graded module over gamma star of o which is just k x naught up to x r. Um, that follows from the fact that you've got a, um, a map from O m tensor f n to f m plus n. This is quite easy to check. So we get this, the, the, these maps you can take, um, let's do finitely generated. graded modules over uh, k x naught up to x r on the one hand and on the other hand we can talk about coherent sheaves on p to the r k on the other hand and we've got these inverse maps between them. Um, on the one hand you can go from a coherent sheaf to a graded module by applying this fu functor gamma star um, f. And on the other hand, we can go from graded modules m to coherent sheaves by doing this m twiddle construction. And as I said, gamma star and m twiddle are not inverses. In particular, we gave an example where if you take a finitely generated grade module and take uh, a twiddle it and apply gamma star this need not be isomorphic to m. On the other hand if you do things in the other order um, you do get back to a coherent sheaf so if you, if you take a coherent sheaf and apply gamma star and then twiddle that this actually is isomorphic to f, which we'll be talking a bit about more later. Um, so, um, so next lecture we'll be talking a bit, about, a bit more about this correspondence between coherent sheaves and graded modules.